All right, hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. Today we're back for some more Adobe Photoshop, looking at how to quickly clean dust and scratches out of an old photo, because we're getting it ready for Grandma's birthday, because she wants a picture of our lost cousin, Teddy, who's disappeared in the Amazon, and the only version of it that we still have is covered in dust, flecks, scratches, and uh, some other little tears and stuff. And a lot of these photos, the process of fixing them is a lot like a lot of other repairs. You could use the healing brush tool, which I've showcased in past tutorials. This is where you can click on that, click on the layer you want to edit, and you can slowly go through here and individually edit every single dust mark that appears inside of Teddy's old high school yearbook photo. But Larry, I hear you saying well, that is going to take forever. Do you see how much dust is on this picture? It's literally coded. Well, you're not wrong. And that's why this tutorial is called the dust and scratches tutorial, because you can literally pick this whole photo, go to filter, go to noise, dust and scratches, and my googly goodness, it's almost like Adobe sort of predicted that this would be a thing that people needed. So it's not unusual to have a bunch of dust appear on a scanner when you're scanning in old photos. And rather than try to meticulously clean that like a professional, because inevitably it's not going to work out quite the way you intend, it's easier just to pop open this little doodad. And it will pretty easily, with a shuffling of a couple sliders, remove the vast majority of the dust and scratches in an image. Although in this case, with as not as high a res as this photo can be, I'm not entirely certain that all of the junk in the background here is in fact dust, or if it's just stuff from a really bad backdrop. I'm gonna assume it's dust though, cause it certainly doesn't enthuse me what I am seeing. So basically what this dust and scratches filter is doing is it's blurring every piece of a certain size detail on the screen trying to get rid of dust. And you can set the threshold level for how much is going to be blurred down here, and you can set how much you want every last little bit of that blurred with the radius of the blur up here at the top. A nice way of saying it is just click the preview checkbox here and then see what your changes are going to do when you make them. Now I can already tell you that this is a tool that you got to be very careful with, or you will, as you can see here, very quickly obliterate a vast majority of the detail in your photo. So smaller radiuses tend to be better, and then if you need to, you can erase a lot of the rest of that by simply running it over by hand really quickly with the dust and scratches healing brush tools. So for this particular one, I'm going to turn the threshold down a little bit and I'm going to leave the radius at about one and take a look at what this does to our details. So for the most part, this isn't mauling the detail in our picture too badly. It's mostly getting out dust flecks. So I can actually turn up the radius a little bit and see how far we can take this before it obliterates all the detail. And what I want to do is I want to preserve the detail in our eyes, in our mouth, because it wouldn't do for grandma's birthday to have cousin Teddy looking like a ghoul or like a disembodied lost soul of the nether region. E either way, you get my point. So I'm gonna probably leave this at a two, but it's still destroying the detail in the shine in his eyes and the detail in his lips and his teeth. So I have a solution to this. We're actually going to select everything but his eyes and mouth, and then we're going to run the filter. To do this, I'm just going to select his mouth with the lasso tool. I'm going to hit shift to add to this selection. You'll see there's a little plus symbol that appears next to your lasso when you hold that. This works for every selection tool. And I'm going to select both of his eyes so that I can retain all of the important details. Although admittedly, his right eye looks like it doesn't have any shine in it. And it also kind of looks like he had a stroke at one point. So that's selected. I'm going to go to select inverse up here, shift control I if you want to use the hotkey and be fancy. And then that's going to select literally everything but his eyes and mouth. And then we can go back to noise 
dust and scratches, and we can play around with this to our heart's content and see if we can't maul the detail out of absolutely everything else. And I have a wonderfully complex policy about how I use this tool. I move the sliders around until everything looks like somebody took their palm of their hand on a, on a fresh painting and smeared it around. And we're going to see what we get. So, the lower this threshold, it's looking for smaller details. It looks like if I get up to like a three, I start to blur his shirt. So, let's leave it at like a three. And is that that's looking pretty good, actually. For such a small image like this, I don't think Grandma will notice. So, we'll click OK. And that's looking pretty darn good. All the details that kind of looked all icky in the background have mostly been blended together. So it just looks like whoever the photographer was just used a cheap backdrop that all of the high school photographers that have ever existed somehow find. And now I can zoom in to his eyes and I can say, okay, this is all looking pretty good, but there's like an anomaly here. And there's like a thing here and here. And there's a one little spot in the corner of his mouth. And that looks like it, for the most part, is pretty darn good for his eyes. Now, if I wanted to be a stickler about it and be kind of, you know, fancy this up for grandma's birthday. I might also be inclined to fix the droopier eye because that doesn't look that great. This is t this is Teddy's last last memory. He got lost in the Amazon. We we got to make sure he looks the best for everybody. So we're actually going to edit transform after we copy this. Flip horizontally. And we're actually going to edit this so that he's got a fresh eyeball. From here, I'm going to select the mask tool on our layer. That's the add vector mask. It looks like a little square with a circle in it. I'm going to hit B to bring up our brush. We want something with a softness to it. So I want this to only be a bit hard. And then the size, let's dunk that down to like this. That's a very nice size. And we're going to gently by making sure by hitting X that we have the black color selected, we're gonna gently try to blend this together with a very soft brush. I want Teddy looking so fancy, you hardly recognize the man. In fact, I'm not really thrilled with this brush, so I'm gonna pick this really soft round brush and I'm really going to make it slightly bigger and really blend in Teddy's brand new cybernetic eye. This is where the magic of Photoshop comes in real handy. In fact, let's make this a little smaller, but not too small. I want only up until a fair chunk of skin is not from the original eye around there. And then I'm going to hide the brushes, select this panel again. I'm going to hit Control and then click on the open window here that has the actual eyeball in it. That selects the eyeball, and then I'm going to make a duplicate of all this, and we can use these very same blending tools with the healing brush to make sure this blends perfectly. Just for the sake of time and sanity with Teddy's eyeball. I'm not a plastic surgeon here, people. Gosh dang it, Jim. I'm not a doctor, I'm a Photoshop man. And then look! Look how great Teddy looks. Look how amazing and splendiferous. He's ready for Grandma's wall. And that's how you use the dust and scratches tool, along with the healing brush to make some tweaks here to remove most of the dust. Uh, if I was going to get rid of this, I'd probably just go to Edit. Let's go to Free Transform and Warp. And we'll just pull this little corner up here. No one needs to know what I've done up there. And that's how you use those tools. They're pretty simple and straightforward. Just play with the dials, you should be fine. Uh, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. I hope this helps to fix your photos or to tweak things or remove dust from a photo you want to send to your family or just to keep as a backup. But until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.